amazing speakers will be four amazing speakers who will each be introduced and over time will let you know something cool about themselves and what is necessary to build an important application. I implore everyone here to get a pen, get a piece of paper, or at least something you can take notes on. This is a session you do not want to miss, I assure you. And I am looking forward to sharing lessons with you. As you've probably been aware, this meeting is being recorded and after the meeting, it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel where you can catch up and reflect on the important things we've done. So in a few minutes, we will be introducing our speakers for today and we'll give the floor to them to join us in this meeting. In the meantime, once again, I would like to encourage everyone to get something to write with. Oh, we just had Jennifer. Jennifer introduced herself. Jennifer, her name is Jennifer and something cool about her. Jennifer is a big time introvert, even if she manages multiple communities. Wow, that's pretty cool. I did not know that. But yes, Jennifer is, Jennifer is everywhere. Susty mama. Jennifer is incredible. I want to be like Jennifer when I grow up, honestly. That's part of why I'm here. I want to learn how she got to that level. So feel free, everyone, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chats and tell us something cool about yourself. Your, your name and something cool about yourself. Okay. Tawhida Ta says she's passionate about healthy living and reading books. That's pretty cool. That is, we have a lot of scholars here. First of all, we have Chino Ditinka and we have Tawhida who is passionate about living and reading books. We have Jennifer who manages multiple communities and we have Hannah, who is excited to be here. Hi, Hannah. Lovely project you've been working on. Oh, OK. Hello, Fermi. Wow, Fermi builds softwares. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have tech bros in the building. We have tech bros that are looking for scholarships. We have tech bros that are here to learn. If you do not pay attention to these lessons, just know that you have competition, very, very serious competition. Okay, so a few more people are joining the meeting. And as soon as the clock strikes 5.10, we can start introducing our very amazing facilitators for this evening. And it is time. Can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> This evening, joining us first is Jennifer Uchindu. In 2019, Jennifer was a Chevening Scholar. In, 20, in the same 2019, Jennifer was a Mandela Washington Fellow, has a master's degree in development studies, specializing in climate change and gender at the University of Development Studies, University of Sussex, England. And Jennifer is our amazing founder here at Susty Vibes. Our next facilitator joining us shortly is Ogene Choe Okolosi, a 2023 Chevening Scholar studying for a Master's in Sustainable Finance and Accounting at the University of Sussex. He is a Port Harcourt Viber and a member of the project team. Also joining us is Excel Amafuli, Commonwealth Shared Scholar, studying a Master's in Environment, Politics and Development at SAOS University of London. He's a Port Harcourt Sosti Viber, and he's a member of our esteemed research team. And last but not the least, joining us this evening is 
Ikena Orji. Ikena won the UNMC College of Public Health grant covering a, few, a full tuition and including a graduate assistantship and monthly stipend. He is currently running a PhD in environmental health, occupational health, and toxicology with a concentration in environmental and occupational health at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. He is a part of our Lagos Swasti Vibes community, and he is a projects team member. In a matter of minutes, each and every one of these amazing people will join us one by one and tell us what they did that stood out, what made a difference, and what they would like all of us to take away from this experience. I implore everyone to settle down. If you need to, go and use the restroom, go and drink a cup of water, but pay close attention, get a pen, get a piece of paper, get whatever you need to make sure you get the most out of this session. And I assure you, it will be worth your while. We have Chevron Scholars down from 2019 to 2023. 2023, it is still hot. And in our midst are amazing people who are all here to learn. Really, really hope we do not miss out anything. So taking the floor for me right now will be the amazing, the one and only Susty Mama, Jennifer. Good evening. Hi, Tom. Good evening. How are you doing, Jennifer? I'm Thank fine. you for being here. Thank you for everything. And we would like to know in the next couple of minutes, could you tell us your story? How you got the Shepherd Scholarship? Where everything started from and what you would want us to take away from the experience to make sure we can make the success of our own. Absolutely. And welcome, everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your busy or breezy Saturday to just come learn about scholarships, learn about all of the amazing hacks and tips to get the best out of your scholarship applications. First things first, I, I think I am a 2018 Mandela Washington Fellow. I'm not sure now, but I think there's um, an issue with that profile. And I just wanted to say, Getting Chivnin in 2019 was not the first time I had applied. I think it was the second time. So I had applied like twice. Um, first was a long time ago, um, just when I was just starting out Susty Vibes. And then um, I then tried to apply again before I got in. And also to say that I'm running a second master's now. And I was able to actually get full scholarship from the university directly. So oftentimes people limit themselves um, and say, oh, I didn't get Chivnin, I didn't get Commonwealth, you know, I didn't get any of this kind of big name scholarship. But I did want to mention that sometimes you can get funding directly from the university. So before you look into even applying for a master's, look at the department, look at what sort of scholarship and support they offer and what it takes to apply. Um, with UCL, which is where I'm doing my second master's now, it was just a matter of looking at their website and seeing that they had an opportunity for people who were interested in funding to just you know, write an essay um, and send to them to consider for full funding. So I just wanted to say, it. Chivin is extremely competitive. Um, a lot of people get scared and that often translates into how they even write their essay, basically. So I think for me, I've been on both sides. So I've applied, I've gotten in, and I've also interviewed people. And I know what you know, Chivin is looking for. Now, the very first thing you want to start with is Chivin is looking for a leader, right? So for me, um, my application journey was somewhat easy because I was already doing a lot of leadership work. So I always find my application story very difficult to replicate for people because not everybody is a founder of an organization and has like a massive portfolio as I do. 
But because I've been on the other side, I've also seen people like Organe, you know, people who are not founders of organizations, regular people who are able to apply and make a very compelling um, application. So you could be someone who's interested in something. So for example, Anna, I know is interested in issues around gender. You can put your, um, you can make an application that shows me what you've let what you know about um, gender issues in Nigeria and Africa, what you've done about it. Have you taken a course? Have you volunteered somewhere? Do you have something that, you know, whenever I look at your application, I can see that this person is really passionate about this issue. So you then wanting to go and do a master's in this topic makes a lot of sense. Um, I would also want to see what kind of networking skills do you have? So four things Chivnin is looking for is your leadership. So the work that you've done, how do you prove that you're, you're a leader? What service initiatives have you been a part of? Um, and with Chivnin, you can actually mix it. You can talk about whether you've been a leader in um, whether you've been a leader in church, you can include it. You've been a leader as a cost rep, you can include it. You've worked in an NGO, you've volunteered. All those are leadership experience that you can put together and make a compelling case as um, someone who's a leader. Children will also ask you about your networking skills. Do you use social media? Um, some people think, um, some people think that um, networking is just about, oh, where do you go to? I attend X events and all. You can actually, I remember my, my own application actually just said, oh, I do a lot of social media. Susty Vibes was literally, um, it, it was born out of social media and blogging and all of that. So I know that I can reach out to people on LinkedIn. I can talk about my work on LinkedIn um, and connect with right-minded people and like-minded people. So Anna, again, I know you use LinkedIn enough um, a lot of times, so you can, Talk about that experience. What happens when you post something on LinkedIn? What do you post about? Are you constantly looking for young people like yourself to work with, to volunteer with, to lead projects? Has anything come out of your networking skills? So those are some of the things I talked about. I remember um, there was something we used to do back in the day, um, Susty Person of the Month at the time. And I talked about how social media literally would help us find people to interview. And this was a platform to inspire young people to see, well, you can have a career in sustainability and all of that. And then the third thing Chivnin is looking for beyond leadership and networking is your actual study in the UK, right? So I need to, I need to be able to see or they need to see that this is something you're really interested in and it has that that you've you've checked it and the uk is the best place for you to study this course so i want you to show me that you've checked maybe multiple schools i remember during my time i had applied to sussex i had applied to um exeter i applied to two courses within exeter an mba in um sustainable sustainable business and then sustainable development and then sustainability at Sussex, which I didn't end up doing. Um, that's a different story. But basically, all of the courses were all similar and they were all sort of geared towards the same aim. I want to increase my knowledge in sustainability issues. I want to learn how to run a sustainable um, business when I come back. I want to learn more about development issues, impact work, and all of that. So it has to show. And then why UK? You know, why do you want to do this? You know, uh, why not the US and all? And why that particular school? In this part of your essay, feel free to do a lot of research about the school. And Sussex is a great place. Talk about how, for example, Sussex has the number one course in development, which is what I ended up doing, by the way. You know, it's always a great way to say, well, this school is number one in the whole world. That's why I want to go there. Um, you know, either study this course or just um, connect with the faculty there. Or that you know a lot of alumni who have gone there and they've come out and they're doing amazing things. You'd like to go there. 
Or I remember reading someone's essay who I interviewed. She talked about a particular faculty, um, like someone who lectured in the school and said she had checked the person on LinkedIn. She had written the person. So she definitely wants to study with the person. She wants to do her master's thesis. The person is willing to supervise her. So we like it was beyond reasonable doubt that this person wants to study in the UK. Some people can also say, um, they want to study in the UK because, you know, they love football. So they want to be able to have access to, you know, going to the stadium. Some people talk about the beach, ease of travel, all of that. I think in that point, you can actually say all of that. Um, it's not going to be marked against you. Don't be too serious. Here, they're expecting to see a balanced side of it. And then finally, I think, the last bit is your career plan, right? So Jivlin expects you to come back. And I, and I need to say that for people who are thinking to Jaffa. So Jivlin is not that kind of scholarship. You're expected to come back home. Um, if you're looking for scholarship that will let you stay back and all of that, consider looking at what scholarships that the university itself offers. Um, there might be you know, leeway to do that, but you need to have a career plan. What is your plan when you come back to Nigeria? Where would you like to work? Or would you like to go, you know, do your PhD and all of that? But um, Chivni literally wants you to say, this is my plan when I come back. Um, I remember um, breaking it down to say, oh, short term, I will continue working on Susty Vibes. Medium term, I would love to do some consultancies. And then long term, I might decide to serve Nigeria and work in the government. It has to show you that you need to be able to show them that you have a plan. You know, it might not go that way, but you need to have a plan, basically. So that is the entire story for Chivning and what my application looked like, what I know is expected. With UCL, it was quite similar. It was just making a convincing case as to why it would be worth it for these guys to give me their money, basically. Why am I trying to do this course? Why do I think it's important to do it now? Why have I applied? Why am I the best candidate and all of that? So that is my achievement experience. I'm looking forward to, hear from, um, to hearing from Excel and Organe on what the experience was like. Thank you and over to you, Tam. Thank you, Jennifer. That was an amazing summary of your journey. And thanks for the insightful tips. In a couple of minutes, we'll reach back again to you so you can give us some final words and participate in our Q&A session. But for now, if anyone has any questions based for Jennifer or anything you've talked about, please feel free to start getting your questions down and a Q&A session will open up shortly. Right now, coming to the floor is Ogene Choe Okolosi, the 2023 Shivening scholar, and he's studying a master's in sustainable finance and accounting at the University of Sussex. We really look forward to hearing your insights. Are you ready to share with us? Can we? Are you with us? Um, yes, thank you, Tom. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, hey, bro. So, floor is open to you. Please feel free to share your story with us and let us know what you think we should do going forward. Okay, um, thank you very much, Lam, and thank you, Susty Vibes, for the opportunity. I really want to, Tom, I really want to actually appreciate you for actually um, getting the pronunciation of my name correctly. Like, a lot of people struggle with uh, pronouncing the name correctly, so kudos to that. I really appreciate. And then uh, Jennifer has actually said a lot about Chevney. I think she has touched on basically all the essays. So I think what I'm basically going to do is to just share my experience, how I started and what I think I did differently to actually get the scholarship. So I think the first thing basically for me is to um, actually try to understand myself. I know the scholarship that actually works for me. So there are different kinds of scholarship, schools offer scholarship and then you have scholarship bodies as well. But I don't think every scholarship was for me. And so when I actually looked into myself, I realized that the only scholarship I could really apply for or that was for me was actually Chevening. So I, I knew that, okay, well, when it comes to leadership and networking, even though I'm an introvert, I don't, I'm a shy person, I'm an introvert, I don't step out that much, but I actually felt that I had some form of, you know, networking skills 
and also networking experience as well. So I realized that, well, Trevin is probably the best for me. And I don't think I bothered looking into Erasmus or Commonwealth. I know I tried MasterCard at some point, but MasterCard was more like an afterthought, really. My focus was basically on Trevin. So basically, first of all, just know yourself and know exactly what works for you. So know the kind of scholarship that you're actually going to look out for. So if you are the type that's actually very interested in things like, you know, more of research, so you can look at Erasmus, you can look, look at um, Commonwealth, yes, so those two. But like Jennifer actually said, Chevney is looking out for people that have leadership experience, leadership capabilities or qualities, and also networking skills. So I knew that, well, I could actually put out something really strong on those four essays. And yeah, so I chose Chevney. I think um, the next thing really is starting on time. So if you have any scholarship in mind, so after you've actually identified a scholarship that you're interested in, I think you need to start, you need to start on time. You need to start digging deeper into the scholarship. What are their requirements? Do you meet those requirements? If you don't meet those requirements, then you have enough time to start actually like, if there are experiences that you need to gain, you try to gain those experiences. If there are qualifications that you need to also gain, you try to gain those qualifications so that you can actually meet the requirements of the scholarship. So I think that was the next thing I did. I started on time. I think I started looking out, I started looking into Chevney about three years before I applied. And uh, yeah, three years before I applied. Then the next thing I think I did was that I did not apply until I actually found what I was passionate about. And also something that Chevney will probably be very, very interested in also funding. So I think about two years before I applied, I kind of like developed an interest in sustainability and climate change. And so I started reading about it, watching a lot of videos, taking courses. And I think in 2022, when I applied, I think around September, that was when I joined Susty Vibes. So basically, if you start on time, you have enough time to actually plan yourself and get all the qualifications and also finding your passion. I think your passion will also enable you align yourself to the scholarship of your you know, choice and interest. So I think that's the third point. The fourth point I'll probably give that something I did differently was also seeking support. There's something uh, one of my friends told me, she said, you have to know when to seek support. And I actually did my best to seek a lot of support. I also, I'll come to Jennifer. So before my application, and that's why it's very important to start on time, because if you are going to seek support for this application, so where's the deadline? Or even when the application even opens, you already have like scholars or people that have experience, they are always very busy. They are receiving a lot of emails, a lot of requests for support, for essay review, for guidance. You don't want to start reaching out to people at that time. So you want to reach out to people almost about two months or even three months before the application even opens, especially for children. Unless you are very close to somebody who already has a scholarship, then you can reach out maybe three months or, but even, even at that, I would advise that you reach out to people on time. So I reached out to um, one of my mentors, I think in May, the application opened in August. I reached out to, a mentor, to my mentor in May and she was very free. So she was actually open to actually support me at that time. And then I started writing my application, writing my essays also very early as well. So start early and reach out for support also very early. So during my interview, I, I think I reached out to Jennifer. And this brings me to another point again. So any scholarship that you're interested in, I think you need to research and also if they have pages on social media, please follow all of them. So I was, I was interested in Chevney and I made sure I followed Chevney on Twitter. I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on Facebook or just on Twitter. So I followed them on Twitter. So it was uh, through Twitter, I was able to actually, I didn't even know that um, Jennifer was, was an alumni of Chevron, I didn't even know. It was when they dropped a post appreciating um, alumni actually supported the interview process for the 2022 scholars. That was when I saw her face. I'm like, ah, is this person not the founder of Susty Vibes? I'm like, ah, this is Jennifer. So immediately I just reached out to her immediately. I sent her a message on Workplace and she responded. She was like, okay, oh, that's fine. Let's set up a meeting. And then I spoke to her. I think Jennifer really inspired me you know, for the interview because me, I'm an introvert. So even up to now, I've not even shared, I've not made any announcements on LinkedIn. Oh, I won the Chevron Scholarship because 
I just want to just reserve myself. I don't want, I'm, I'm just trying to be in you know, a reserve. And that's the beauty about Chevney. Chevney is looking for leaders and people that can network in various ways, various ways. So that's the beauty about it. So even the fact that I wasn't really, you know, that the extrovert type, I was still able to actually get it. So she also told me that, oh, that's fine. I don't even like talking. But I told her that my networking, I'm not the type that likes to, you know, talk on social media. I'm always very reserved. She was like, no, that's fine. I'm like that as well. I'm like, oh, okay, I yeah, like that. And you also want the scholarship. I think that's actually very, that's inspiring. So she gave me insights. You get So because I follow their page on Instagram, or oh, sorry, on Twitter, I was able to know that Jennifer was actually being on the panel. So I needed somebody to give me an insight of what it feels like to be a panelist, to actually interview uh, prospective um, scholars. What does it feel like? What, what do you guys look out for? And I think one question I asked her was, okay, the, person, the people that may actually get it after the interview, what did they do wrong? She was able to give me those, you know, those tips and actually took that into the interview. Again, knowing yourself is another thing because when you know yourself very well, you are able to actually um, manage the information that you get. Now, I had a lot of scholars who said, oh, the interview lasts for one hour, 45 minutes. They ask you a lot of questions. Me, I know myself. If you engage me in a conversation for one hour, I go speak pidgin English. I can't avoid it. I know it fits. I must always speak. I, I won't even know when. I will just infuse pidgin into the conversation. I don't know how that may actually influence you know, the panel when they're actually selecting. So I told myself that, me, I don't want to have an interview for more than 30 minutes. And that was exactly how it was. I think my interview lasted for about um, basically 25 minutes. After the interview, I was even worried that, oh, this interview was very short. So am I still going to get it? I called Jennifer again, always know when to seek for support and help. So I called Jennifer again. I shared my experience. She was like, don't worry, it's fine. Just wait out for the outcome. And, uh, and I think that was it. So that, that's basically it for me. So know yourself, start on time, seek support, find out your passion and Hello. Uh, it, it seems Organizer is having a bit of network complications. So we'll give him a few minutes and he will come back again when it's about time for the final words. If you have any questions for him, his session has been lovely. He's been talking about how we should be intentional. We should take some time to research and be sure of what we want to do. If you have any questions, you can start leaving them in the chat and we'll take note of them and follow up with them during the question and answer session. So right now we will be introducing our next speaker for the evening, Excel, welcome. Excel is a Commonwealth Shared Scholar studying for a master's degree in environment, politics and development at the SOAS University of London. Excel has quite a bit of experience with research and he has even worked for the Society Vibes research team. Excel, please, could you join us, Excel? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. So good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you, Ogene, and thank you to Sosti Mama for uh, putting down the groundwork and making it easy. Sorry, I'm currently outside. Everyone can see. So I don't know if probably putting off my camera will be OK. So I'm sitting in front of a library. I'm not home, I'm far from home. But uh, I think what they've said covered most of the information, but I think I'll just share my story uh, about how it all started. So after my, during my NYS, even while I was in school, from my uh, secondary school, I already uh, had in mind that I wanted to kind of get a different kind of experience, uh, both studying, living and other experiences so it could uh, give you a different perspective on everything so but I didn't work for this until like NYSC so during my NYSC 
I knew I had literally no experience uh, apart from the uh, internship that we had in university because of the COVID strike, the COVID uh, pandemic and everything, how it affected everyone. So I think the first thing I did was to get a, a book, a note. So I think that's where everyone should start. So you should actually have like a note where you keep record. So whatever you're applying for and whatever you're doing, so you just put it down. Uh, you take note of the date of the like important information. So uh, when I decided to apply, I actually applied for Chivning. So I, I didn't even make it to the interview stage and I knew I wasn't going to make it. But what happened, why I applied was because I, I had literally no experience and no uh, this thing. But I wanted to go through the whole process of the application to get a feel of it. So when I applied for that, I saw, okay, this is how applications work. So the first thing, I already knew what was going to work and what wasn't going to work. But I just wanted to experience it. And then that was when when the, the, the feedback came. I wasn't hot at all so i took it and i was like yes and this was what happened so i reached out to some people who are chevening uh, uh alumni so my senior prefect he was studying in the london school of uh uh hygiene and tropical medicine then so i reached out to him and then we spoke for some time then other than that so i began for the for the for the commonwealth scholarship the shared so there are two types of Commonwealth scholarship. They have the the master's scholarship and they have the shared. So I avoided the master's. So it was a personal choice. So for other countries, you can, I know people who did and even got for both master's and shared and then went for the shared. But the master's is that you go through a nominating agency. So they, you apply to a nominating agency. For Nigeria, is like, I think, Federal Ministry of Health or some of uh, education. So but I avoided anything that has to do with uh, going through uh, uh, the Nigerian system. So I was just like, okay, I just wanted a direct contact with the uh, people who were doing the review. So I now positioned myself for shared. Then I knew I did not have the experience. So the first th uh, thing I did was I went through the website of Commonwealth. So they have like, and their websites are very easy. So most people are usually scared to go through things like this. But when you go, they actually find out that it's actually very straightforward and easy. So they made it just easy, just tap different tabs. I just once you just click, it will change to the next thing. You just scan through. So you don't need to read like in depth. Just as you're tapping, scan through, read through the whole thing, just scan through and see. Then pick out points like requirements and uh, other things. Then also start preparing. So when you look at the uh, schools that you're eligible for, you can take them down and just like, okay, this school is offering this one because Commonwealth shared, they list schools and then they list the courses. So when you take out the schools and you, you pick the schools that you want. So I took them down on the piece of, on my note and then put the courses down. And uh, I was like, I'm going to get back to the schools later. So I just took the notes and then I went for videos and eBooks that about Commonwealth Chevening. So even when I was, uh, or, uh, applying for the for the Commonwealth again, I was still reading both Chevening applications because I wanted to see okay, is someone who is applying for Chevening is it different? And I saw that okay, this is what is uh, is very similar. Although Chevening has just four aces, but Commonwealth now spread those four aces into about like eight or nine aces, but shorter and uh, more direct. So I'm like okay, I noticed that this is just similar, the same pattern of everything. Then uh, when I started the whole writing process, another thing that people do is just when you're writing, don't just write from your opinion. So if you're giving op uh, opinion-based uh, talks, just even though they'll tell you it's a cost-based uh, program, but you need to actually show that, okay, uh, you can do research or you can actually perform. So it should be factual. If you're dropping that, okay, Nigeria has this problem or the world has this problem or my village has this problem, you should be able to back it up like, okay, according to channels or channels did this or the BBC said this or you quote the researcher or you quote whatever UNICEF or whichever person. So that way they'd be like, okay, you're not actually saying that, ah, I just observed that people are, are old in my village. So who are you to be observing such? So you should actually say that, okay, this has been proven 
or is out there and you cite that. So those little things, uh, I think they also help. Then uh, one thing that uh, caught it is starting early. So like now the Commonwealth shared is starting in November. So the best time to start was months ago <laughs> or is months ago, but yeah, it's still not late to start now and get things ready. Then uh, stuff, that little things that people wait for. I know someone who was like uh, that he will wait for when he's applying, then he will get his international passport. So myself, when I was applying for Chevening, I didn't go for the passport because I knew I just wanted to get the field. But when I decided to go for the Commonwealth, I became very uh, uh, direct about it. And I got, I went for the international passport. So most people just leave it for, you know, Nigerian factor, you might get an international passport and you don't pay for all these yeah, express. I don't know. Uh, it might take you six months, five months, depending on where you do it. So these are kind of things you should look out for and prepare ahead of time. So, and uh, sorry if I'm stopped training, it's uh, quite cold here. So uh, other than that, those little preparations set you out. You look at the application. Then one thing I would also advise is that, because Commonwealth shared is that you can apply to 30, all the courses in the world. As you're seen, as you're eligible, you can apply to uh, as many as you want. Is it only, Chevening, I think Chevening, you put up an application, one application, and then you put in three schools that you fill and rank them. But the Commonwealth is that every school you're applying for individually. So the, the, the advantage is that it has, it gives you more leeway to apply to as many as you want. But on the other hand, it's quite tasking because imagine applying to like, 20, I know people who applied to like 25, 30 and got just one and people who applied to like 20 and got zero. So it's not by your uh, number of applications, it's by putting in the best. If you're applying to one, let that one be strong. If you're applying to 20, write each of those 20s as if you're writing each individually. So uh, just like the whole thing when i when it began the first thing that we did was i first went to the schools as i mentioned i went to the schools before i even started the commonwealth application i went to the schools and i applied like a month before the uh, application started so and you know getting admission in the schools in uk it's not that difficult it's just once you cross the requirements they'll give you where the trick is is getting the funding so this is where, so I just applied for the schools because when the application starts, I don't want to be putting my focus on applying for schools and also applying for funding. So I already screened out schools that apply are uh, asking for uh, uh, application fees. The ones that I could give me waivers, I applied for waivers. So these are little things that you can do and save yourself time and concentration. So, and most people just leave everything until the last point. So. I know that you can apply for an, uh, uh, for next year's uh, uh, courses. You can apply this year in the schools and tell them you want them to give you admission for 2024. And they will give you, they'll just put you on waiting list and give you the admission and put it then. And you have your application number because when you're now applying for the Commonwealth, you put the numbers in there. So I made, I actually made like, uh, I think, I plan to make 20, 20 common word applications. I, I decided to set that number for myself because most times if I if I put five, I might end up doing like three. So I decided to put 20 and I made 10. So on that 10, each of them, I wrote each as, as uh, okay, okay. So I wrote each of them like it's going to be uh, quite like the only thing. So if you're applying for 20, each you apply as though you're applying to uh, one of them, and you know you don't have any other option. So, and uh, wrapping up, I think one more thing that would save you time is recommendation, because if you have a poor recommendation, most people just write wacky recommendation letters and uh, you put up. So it actually means a lot. The good thing about Commonwealth is that they ask you after they've nominated you. So, but you should start now, reach out to your recommenders. I think your referees should be three. It could be one business and two people from your department. So it's really good to start early and reach out to all these people. And believe me, I think uh, it won't be a problem. So don't reach out to people when you're applying uh, to start reviewing your essays. That would be a bad, <laughs> a bad idea. If you start 
way early. So I think that's just it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, Excel. I mean, right here, we have a lot of amazing scholars. Even as we speak, Excel was at the library and still tearing it up, still reading, still getting ready for more success. So right now we will be inviting Ikena to join us. Ikena won the UNMC College of Public Health grant covering a full tuition, including a graduate assistantship and monthly stipends. He's currently running a PhD in environmental health, occupational health and toxicology with a concentration in environmental uh, at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Welcome Ikena, please share with us what you did and what you would like us to take away from your experience. What did you do? What did you do differently? How can we learn from you? Welcome, Ikena. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Can you hear me? My audio. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, loud and clear. Okay, so um, I'd like to share a screen. to you I'll be sharing a slide. So can you permit me? Okay, okay. Um, so I will permit you from our end. Uh, just a minute. Okay, is the screen, is my screen visible? Yes, it's visible, thank you. How okay. are you? For you. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Ikenna, and uh, I'm happy to, to be here today to share my little experience. So uh, I'll be very fast because of uh, time, but um, I will also drop the slides if you're interested. Um, just like uh, the other speakers have uh, mentioned, uh, my experience will be solely based uh, on uh, admission and uh, studying in the United States. So it might be slightly different. So I need us to take note of that also. So um, most of uh, what I'll be sharing here again has already been mentioned. So uh, bear with me if I repeat what has been said here. So uh, I'm starting with a little background about myself. So I've worked for some time as uh, in, in health, uh, safety and environmental uh, uh, responsibilities. So uh, I decided that um, at the point I was doing the same thing all over again, all over and all over again. So I needed a new challenge. I've always had uh, the 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 desire to do a PhD. So, but um, having that desire is one, but you also need to um, narrow down what you want to um, do a PhD on, because a PhD is like, a, you know, you studying a small area out of, you know, big, 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 big knowledge. So you have to put those things uh, into consideration before applying for a PhD. So uh, in my case, I wanted to go into what I was doing, which is environmental, occupational health, not much of a toxicology. So that was why I chose the United States because I noticed most of their programs, PhD programs, usually have uh, specializations in uh, environmental health and occupational health. So um, I highlighted um, some of the information I have here because I didn't uh, use them when I was applying. I used my BSc. I didn't use my MSc then because I didn't have the transcripts at hand. Uh, so I only used the BSc to apply for a direct PhD. Then the other ones like the NEHA and the, the American Conference of uh, Industrial Hygienists and the AIHA, those I joined when I got here. So I didn't use them, but every other information you are seeing there, you are what helped me in securing this uh, funded admission. So what did I do? I started with a degree evaluation. Over here, the um, GPA system is on a four, uh, four, the four scale, unlike in Nigeria, where it's usually on the five scale. So what evaluation does for you is, it helps you to convert your CGPA 
um, into a full um, system scale uh, so that it can be used for study in the United States. This is actually not compulsory, but it increases your chances. Most school requires you to do a form of evaluation yourself because that form of evaluation, apart from converting your CGPA from five points to four point scale, it also helps to verify your degree. So the school doesn't need to start going to um, check if you actually graduated from that university. So that's the importance of uh, um, the West evalu the evaluation rather. So I recommend using West evaluation because it is widely accepted everywhere. So you don't get to do evaluation two times like me when I was trying to cut costs. Okay, so I, I converted my CV into an academic CV. What I had was uh, an, a CV showcasing my industrial experience. And uh, you know, the both both CVs are, are usually different. In academic CV, you need to highlight um, your research and teaching skills. So this is a draft of how my the the CV I used um, for my application looked like. So I you can see my GPA was in the four point scale. I even converted it to reflect on the percentage based on the courses I did. I also um, highlighted my qualifications, my certifications, and my experiences. In my experiences, I focused on teaching, teaching and training that uh, I was carrying out. I did more than this, but I only narrowed it down to research and teaching. And uh, I also included, as you can see, volunteering. I included Sosti Vibes, uh, which is an NGO in Nigeria. Then uh, I also included a website so they can go there and verify. Then for my research and the uh, research experience and the uh, um, interest, I also included what I was looking for, what and uh, the area of research I was uh, uh, looking for. A PhD requires you to do this. In fact, most master's uh, research uh, programs requires you to identify an area of, re of research and you know, to portray your research skills. So this is how my draft looked like. So I, I also requested for a reference. Now, again, I requested for five references, but um, I wanted to show, uh, give an idea of how one of my references looked like. So this was a draft of uh, one of my reference, um, one of my re um, referrals rather, He's based in UK. He's actually a mentor of mine. I've not seen him before. So he's a, he works in um, also in health and safety uh, in uh, one of the biggest uh, gas companies in the UK, which is Cadent Gas. So um, you can see he highlighted my competence again. And uh, he also highlighted the fact that he recommended me for a new qualification because maybe he saw something special in me and he has that confidence in me. So if you look down here saying, because of um, my confidence in him, I recommended he can as someone who should partake in a new safety for business level three qualification. Um, it's, a, it's actually a UK qualification. So um, this is how my draft looks like. And uh, this was what I submitted as part of my application. Then coming to um, the SOP um, settings again. So um, this is a draft of how my SOP looked like. I started with a problem, which you already know, one of the biggest challenges facing Nigeria today currently is environmental health related risks. And um, I also went as far as stating the air quality, the air quality, um we we recorded that particular day i submitted this sop so as of tuesday 10th january 2023 the pm 2.5 concentration that's the particulate matter 2.5 concentration in potakot river state nigeria is 21 times the annual who air quality guidance value indicating the pollution level is unhealthy so i got this from um a website that tracks daily air uh, um, quality uh, index rather. So I used it 
you know, to strengthen my SOP, to really show that what I meant by environmental health-related risk, I was serious about it. So I was kind of giving um, a data, a current data, portraying what I had mentioned. I'm not just saying, you know, we have environmental health-related risk without narrowing down to what I meant. So I also went as far as um, uh, mentioning why I wanted to go for, you know, a PhD in this area, having originated and schooled in the Niger Delta region, you know, uh, I developed a, you know, Uniport was in the Niger Delta, and then my undergraduate research was uh, monitoring oil spill in one of the communities in Ogoni land. So I portrayed that also in my SOP. So if you look, you know, towards the end here, you are going to see where I wrote them, having reviewed the research of several faculties. So just like uh, Jennifer mentioned earlier, I mentioned some of the faculty, Professor Altianen, Professor Stenz, Professor Stadio in my SOP. So mind you, I was asked during um, the PhD interview that of these professors I have mentioned, who will I be willing to work with? So it's also important for you to mention specific professors or specific people and their research work when applying for either a PhD or a master's. Then I started um, searching for schools. So I did this. Um, public health in the United States, most of the schools, they, they, they have an application system online through which you can uh, make your you can submit your application. So it's called SOFAS, um, School of Public Health Association Service. So when you Google so fast, you see a list of uh, universities, go to schools, you see a list of uh, universities that offer public health and different concentrations. So that was what I did. I couldn't, I, I went to uh, so, so fast websites and uh, I identified a lot of schools. But um, I also chose schools that we are CEPH accredited because uh, CEPH is like an accreditation body for um, public health uh, institutions in the United States. You don't want to attend a university that is not uh, accredited in public health in the United States. I also use the US News and World Report ranking to search for the number of schools that are offering a public health in the United States, as well as ASPPH. So after identifying the school I wanted, then I sent a code email. So uh, code email is usually uh, emails that are unsolicited, you know, to someone you don't know or have not communicated with before. I tried looking for the draft of uh, the email I sent, but I couldn't find it. I will still search, uh, continue searching later. So um, I sent a code mail to um, the professors I had identified in my SOP, highlighting my qualifications, my experiences, attaching my um, CV, academic CV again, and uh, my transcript, evaluated transcript. So uh, the professor, one of the professor forwarded the mail to the graduate coordinator who then reached out to me to inform me that several and faculty members. So faculty members are uh, what is referred to as uh, lecturers over here. So um, several faculty. To, to, so they, they looked at my CV and expressed an interest in working with me. So the graduate coordinator got back to me and they encouraged me to apply. So that's the power of code email, so sending code emails to you know someone you've not communicated with highlighting your skills and the research interest. You can also go as far as timing it so that the mail comes in in the morning when the person is just arriving in the office. So then I went ahead to apply through, again, through uh, SOFAS and uh, I attached my SOP. I attached five references. Then I also attached my academic CV. A week later, I was invited for an interview so uh, the interview was with uh, the graduate uh, program committee members. So before then, I had already gone to gone through their academic profile on Google Scholars, gone through the works they've done, 
and uh, we discussed that during the interview. So I also perfect my perfected my introduction strategy. Then having a clear career plan is also um, important when applying to graduate schools because most of them they will ask you um, what do you plan to do when you are done with them. So they don't want to invest money in someone that at the end of the day you don't you know know what you want to do or you don't have a clear career part. So uh, the interview lasted just about uh, 15 minutes. So it's also important when attending interviews to be you know, confident. You go to the interview stage because they saw a potential in you. So I, from my experience, if you get to the interview stage, you're about 70% you know, inside uh, getting the admission and the uh, funding offer. So I followed up, you know, I followed up with the graduate coordinators. I followed up with the um, faculty members requesting for funding from, you know, them. At the end of the day, I was not able to get a direct funding from any of the faculty members because they were all still waiting for grants, uh, several grants which they have applied to. So um, due to my performance, in the interview, I was offered uh, a funding by the department. So it was actually the, the first time it's happening. Normally, when coming into the department newly, you're supposed to go under a mentor. That mentor takes uh, responsibility for your funding or through your stay. But in my case, most of the mentors, maybe I, I applied later, actually. So most of the mentors already had them. Um, um, students they were committed to. So the department decided to um, fund me at least from now till um, next year. I accepted the offer, then I went ahead with my visa application. So I dropped uh, several links of uh, the courses we offer, you know, programs we offer in my institution for both MPH and the, the PhD, just for those who are interested so I don't know thank you so Tom over to you I'm done all right Kenna thank you so much for an amazing session thank you for the slides thank you for everything ladies gentlemen we have had such an amazing session with the last four speakers Ikena Akinachewa Jennifer and Excel, thank you so much for your time. So before we wrap up, one, if anybody has any questions, please, could you leave them in the chat? Very soon we'll be getting into our Q&A session. More importantly, can I ask the last four speakers to please come in one by one to give us a final word? But because we want to make sure everybody and everything is still fresh, we're going to go in reverse. Ikena, do you mind coming up briefly to give us a Oh, no, she, 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 you understand, like, at least I'm not sure it's the first time that we need for someone. One, Sorry about that, everybody. Sorry. But Ikena, please, can we have you on the floor to give us a couple of your final words on the session? Things you really want to hammer down and make sure everyone takes away from this session. Okay. Thank you. Um, in my case, again, uh, I didn't have a first class and um, I didn't have a master's then. I had a master's, but again, I didn't use my master's when I pick, when I applied. So, um, and I got a direct PhD offer. So I'm buttressing on this because um, it's not um, CGPA or the class of degree when it gets to this stage that gives an edge. It is knowing what you want and packaging your application, submitting a strong application, focusing on your strengths. So I focused on my experience, my, my industrial experience after school and my certifications. So that was what gave me an edge. So I would say whoever is applying, be confident. And if you are invited for an interview, they are not doing you a favor. They invited you for an interview because they needed you and they saw a potential in you. So when going there, be confident. Don't go thinking that, okay, or being overwhelmed by you know, the people you are going to meet. 
So just be confident and uh, these things are doable. Uh, there are so many funding opportunities in the United States. And uh, so I encourage people to please submit applications here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ikena. Thank you. That was an incredible insight. So just to buttress, please, ladies and gentlemen, as Ikena has stated, work on your strengths. And when you go in, try to make sure you give your best. You are welcome there. You were invited there. And that's why you are in your path. So next, Excel, are you with us? Excel, could you come up and give us a few final words on the most important things you think everyone who has heard the session, even if they didn't hear anything you said, even if they came late, what is the one, what is this thing you want them to take away from this session? Excel? Yeah, okay. So uh I think first off, you have to remember that these people are about to spend about fifty thousand dollars on your head. So it's not a joke. So if you're if you're making an application, you should just put it at the back of your mind that I am going to get this. Like when you have that mind frame that okay, this is mine. So then that will make you to put up your best foot forward. And uh if even if you don't do anything else, don't don't wait for the last minute. Because that already shows you're 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 not ready for it. So don't wait for the last minute. I think that's just it. Thank you so much, Excel. Thank you so much. So quick recap. Ikena said, put your best foot forward and be very confident. Get your strengths and be very confident. Excel said, you should make sure you focus and you commit to it. You make sure that you get it done knowing fully well that everyone is betting on you. There are stakeholders in your success and they also want to see you win. Just remember, it's a team thing, not just about you. Okay, Chawe, are you with us? Could you give us your final words? The important thing uh, you want to make people take away. Okay, I think, uh, uh, thank you very much. I think I'll just point out two things basically. So I think first, you again, you need to start on time. It's very important that you start on time. Very, very important, start on time. And lastly, I think, um, intentionality is very important. I think you need to be intentional with your application. And uh, being intentional means different things to different people. So intentionality could be actually could actually be expressed in you know hard work, could actually be expressed in uh, probably spirituality. So if you if you go to church, pray a lot, you have to put in these applications into like put it in prayers. You know, if you're a Muslim, so basically if you believe in God, you have to pray, you have to actually believe in God and you have to pray. And uh, basically, just be intentional and start on time. I'm putting a lot of work. So I think that's it for me. Thank you so much, Aganancha. And right now, we'll be passing the mic to Jennifer to give us an important last minute final words from the speakers about the important things she thinks she take away. Because Jennifer hasn't only won scholarships and been a fellow, but Jennifer has had multiple time, multiple talks of this nature, and she has supported these kind of conversations. So if there's anything she wants us to take away from this talk, it's probably something she has seen work over and over again. So I implore everybody to please pay attention to the final speaker. And after this session, we will begin the Q&A. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chats. Jennifer. Please let us know what are your final important parting words on this subject. Thanks, Tam, and thank you so much, um, Ikena, Dr. Ikena, in the making. Thank you. That was really, really good. Even I learned so much um, from that session. I think um, previous speakers have literally said it's all, but one thing I will add is we get better by doing and by practice, right? So try and you know, write applications, just try, you know, make efforts to go into some of all these applications and attempt them. Um, you just never know because that attempting and practice just helps you build the right vocabulary. You know what is obtainable. You know how to write stuff. 
um, read books, you know, books about um, or studying in the UK, for example, you'll be able to pick in one, pick one or two things. And then finally, there are a lot of videos around how to apply for scholarship applications. I remember I even watched a lot of videos from Nigerians when I was preparing for my interview and all. So don't feel like you know it all. Literally go out and seek, you know, knowledge that is available on the internet. Reach out to people if you must, but there's a lot of free stuff on the internet. So please use them. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you very, very much. On behalf of everyone here, I would like to thank every single speaker, Jennifer Uchendu, Ogena Chere, Okolosi, Excel, Amafule, and Ikena Oji. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your insights. We thank you for everything you've done so far. Now we are about to get into the Q&A session. Several people have asked their questions already and some are still asking. If your question has been answered in the DMs, please understand if it gets skipped. But if, if it has not, we look forward to giving an answer. Right now, handling this Q&A session with, on behalf of Susti Vibes is Ulutola Olashendi. Tola, please, can you take over and let's get this session started. Okay. Thank you so much, Tam, for that wonderful um, introduction. I also want to thank all the facilitators for these insightful um, talks and the application stories. Thank you for orienting the participants in the right direction for applications. And so I'll be going straight into the Q&A section. And the first person I'll be directing this ex um, question to is Excel. So there's a question in the chat. There's a question in chat, chat section. Um, Yara from Ghana is asking about um, how to select a nominating agency in Ghana. I don't know if you have any um, info, any way you can help him because he's asking if there is a way to select a nominating agency, but he can't contact them. So is there any other alternative? Like what can he do? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, I actually applied for Common Work Shared. I even stated that I avoided the Common Work Masters because of the whole nominating agency. But I do have people who uh, got from the Masters. So probably he would reach out to me, maybe on LinkedIn, and then just introduce himself. Then I would reach out to some people who are actually applying currently, and they can give him the information. I'm sure they'll be happy to help. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, um, okay. Thank you very much. And then the next question will be going to um, Organetro. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, um, Excel is asking what can an on, what can undergraduate students specifically do in order to adequately prepare themselves before they get to the stage where they qualify for these scholarships. Okay, um, thank you very much for that question. And I think I saw the question in the chat box. So I think I, I tried to actually respond by typing, but that's that's fine. Um, again, I, I think I'll repeat again that it's not too early to start looking out for scholarships. So while you're in your undergrad, I think Excel mentioned something like that, that while he was in school, he already knew that, okay, he wants to apply for scholarship. So I think now, you can start looking out for, you know, scholarships, Erasmus, Commonwealth, and Chevney, and look out for what they require from you. For Chevney specifically, they look out for leaders and people that have networking examples, uh, sorry, networking skills. And for myself personally, I think my first um, leadership example for Chevney was my time during my undergrad. I was director of sports in my department, and that was my first example. I think during my interview, I also mentioned, I think that was my example too during my interview. I also went for that to explain and talk about what I did as a director of sports while I was in school. So if you are looking out for Chevney, you can start you know, building your network now, start you know, taking, um, taking part in activities. You don't necessarily have to hold a position to be a leader, just start, just start making impacts. If you have to actually take courses to build yourself you know, intellectually, you start doing that. So basically start you know, researching about scholarship quite early so you can start meeting the requirements while you're still in school. You have people who immediately after their NYSC, they apply for Chevney and they get it. 
they don't even they don't even wait for three or four years after they graduate to apply and they get it. Why? Because they did a lot during their undergraduate. So they they did a lot of volunteering. They also did they worked so during probably during holiday. So they were able to mix the uh, the work experience requirements for checking. So I, I think that's basically for me. I don't know if any other speaker wants to add to what I've what I've said. Okay, thank you very much for that wonderful answer. Um, next question will be directed to our sister mama, Jennifer. And the question is from Deborah Adeniro. She's asking, what other experience must she have if you don't have a working experience, which may be required when applying? Mm, I think that's a question even probably more suited for Excel, but I think volunteering it's always great um again it depends on what you're applying for and what kind of questions that they will ask you for achieving for example i don't think there's anywhere where they ask you about your work let me see well i think chivney would ask you you need to have had some work experience but there are some other scholarships that don't necessarily need you to have worked you can talk about your volunteering experience um if you're an active source viber again don't lie if you're not active um and they reach out to us we'll deny you so if you're an active source viber you can put it there, talk about what you've done. Have you attended a cleanup? Have you supported the research team? You know, have you been part of anything that has helped the organization? Write about it, you know, talk about it there. Um, it would be good to have a conversation with your team lead or community manager on how to even boost up, you know, that part of your essay. But don't, don't sleep on your volunteering. It's really, really useful because when you go on Saucy Vibes website, we talk about how our volunteers make our work happen. So for you to say you're a Susty Viber, it does mean that you know, you're making things happen at Susty Vibes and we do a lot of work. So what part of that um, volunteering effort are you helping to bring alive? Talk about it, no matter how little. So I think volunteering is always you know, a good way to um, look at it. If you, you were active in your school associations, you know, stuff like that will really, really add up. I remember I was a secretary in our department and stuff. That was part of what I used to write about, even when I didn't have um, work experience. So, you know, think of all the different ways that you've done stuff, you've volunteered, you've been part of stuff. Um, it always adds up. One other separate fellowship that I remember applying for, I talked about how I worked in my youth department in church, and that was, you know, a plus for me. So um, if you've done anything, leadership, working, service, you know, you can always use it for these applications. Thanks. Thanks okay. so much, Jennifer. Okay. Um, can, I, can I add a thing? Okay. Can I... Can I? Yes, please. Oh, okay. So I, I can understand when uh, people talk about uh, not having work experience, but I want to say for my own little experience, as long as you're a human being, you are, you can't go outside and tell people you don't have uh, you know work experience. It counts against you. In fact, you won't get a visa. I can assure you that even if the person is successful and if you go to the embassy and they ask you what you do and you say, yeah, you are not unemployed. No society wants to, you, uh, you know, uh, you know, admit such person. So I say this because there's no how, there's no way you can say you are unemployed. You must be doing one or two things. The only time you will say you are unemployed is maybe when you wake up, you eat, you go back to to sleep. So even if you are a trader, you are employed, you are doing something. You just need to package it in a way so that it suits what you are applying for. There are no two applications that are the same. You have to, each application, look at the requirements and try to package your, uh, your, your application to suit that you know, particular course you are going for. I didn't have a research experience and uh, getting a PhD without a research experience or even without a publication is a big, a big deal. But I got it. I didn't have research experience. I didn't have a publication. But I did not, if you look at the CV template I posted, I didn't say I don't have research experience. I checked my job responsibilities. Ah, what, 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 what do I do from time to time that can match 
this gap that I say I don't have. And I noticed that every month, as is a requirement for uh, the Ministry of Environment, your facility, you must, you must carry out environmental, what we call environmental compliance monitoring by a third party. It's usually done quarterly every year. So you have to do it four times. And I remember that I usually contact these uh, third parties to come and I supervise what they are doing. They check air quality, they check uh, the, the waste management, they check uh, radioactive or electronic waste, and they do a report and they submit to me. And I claimed it, that I do it. I, I do this uh, you know, research. I, I wasn't lying because I took part in it. It's just that I don't do it alone to claim that I did it alone. You understand? So I feel whatever you are doing, experience can come in any form. Just like Jennifer said, don't lie. But you must be, there's no way as a human being that, you know, you are not doing something. You are doing something. Just try to look at what you are doing. Sit down and write it down. Then package it. Have someone look at it for you before you submit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ikena, for that wonderful response. Um, okay. Our next, the last question or second to last question is coming from Dorati Anzaku. And I'll direct it to Mr. Ikena and any other facilitator that might have, because it's a very relatable question. She's asking, do you need to have prepared a detailed research proposal before applying to any school? I think it depends on, on schools, you understand. If the school, some schools require it, some do not require it. So, but even if a school requires it, even if a school is not asking for it, you also need to identify a research area you are you you would like to go into. It's okay to be confused, not knowing where you want to go into, or not knowing you know coming up with a research area. One way you can do that is going through the faculty list in the department you or the program you wish to apply. Look at what they are doing. Look at their research interests. Look at what they've done. Go through um, several of their peer reviewed uh, journals. And ask yourself, is this what I would like to do? Will I like to work with this person? So that we tailor a topic that suits to what they are doing. Even if it is the same thing, no issue. Even if it is exactly the same area they've written in their peer reviewed uh, journal, there's no issue. There's nothing wrong in that. Two people can do two, um, two, two um, um, projects together, but they can relate it, you know, if you are studying on a gas, one can relate the same design and everything. If the both of them are the same design, one can relate it to ammonia, the other one can relate it to another, a different type of gas. It's acceptable, it's understandable in graduate school. You understand? For the ones that require a research uh, proposal, they usually give you a template of what to include in the in the research um, proposal. But I know over here, most of the time, the, the templates they use is NIH, NIH. Uh, they use NIH uh, formats, templates to apply for maybe grants or proposal of this sort. So in the United States here, yeah, most of the time, they use a, um, a, a National uh, Institute for Health, rather, because that's where most of the schools that are uh, carrying out public health research usually gets their grant from. So all you need to do is to go to the website of the school, look at the the the, the templates of uh, the proposal or the, the proposal templates they are requesting for, and go through their faculty. Look at what they are doing. Look at what they are doing and tailor the templates or write it to suit the particular program of uh, one of the faculty. You have to tailor your, your, your research interest to a faculty member. If you are not able to tailor your research interest to a faculty member, there's no way you get admitted or funded into the school because that means what your, your interest is not what they are doing there. So nobody wants to fund, you know, what it's not related to what, they, what, what does not bring any uh, positive value to, to, to their institutions. So it's both ways. If it requires a research, research a, 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 a proposal, then you have to look for the templates and they write it and have people review it for you. But I didn't submit, in my own case, I didn't submit because it was not required. But as you can see in my CV template, I highlighted my research interest. You need to have a research interest, you understand? So it shows that you know what you want and what you want to do and you have a career plan. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Inkena, for that response. I guess that will be our last question for today because our time is fast spent. Um, so we're we'll going straight into the announcement. And the first on our list is um the Anchor program, um, which is um a um an awareness program where we where um mental health mental health professionals and psychiatrists come together and they discuss on how to um contribute to promoting climate awareness care especially for people with climate um who are affected by climate change because they are actually people who are affected by climate change and also we also have our abaddon screening on movie screening on the 14th of october this month so if you're around abaddon you can come to this location watch a movie have fun and talk about um how that movie um how what you got from the movie and how it's you can contribute to the environment basically and then um next on the announcement is the sister party it's a tea party um, which will be taking place on the 27th of October. It's actually an event where everyone comes around and we, um, we gather together and just have conversations that relates to sustainability while having fun doing that. And then lastly, um, on the 26th of October is um, the National Open Dialogue, which um, is, is for people, um, where is an open youth dialogue where people come together and talk about well people come together and talk about the um, Nigeria's energy transition so thank you very much for um, attending this program and so what's next for every participant here um, please follow us or follow us on all our platforms so you can get more updates on relevant learning sessions like this the other sessions apart from this as um, um um, announcement that will be coming up in yeah. the coming months. So please follow us on every um, social media platform and also document your learning experience through your um, social media and tag us. Send it to your friends, post it on your Instagram, post it on your um, X or Twitter accounts. Let people learn from what you've learned here and also take actions. Do not sleep on what you've learned today. Don't just toss your book where you jotted all these important points down start taking actions like some of our facilitators, facilitators said, reach out for help early, um, start writing your statements, start gathering the list of schools you want to apply to. And we are rooting for you and we're waiting to read your winning story next. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Tola. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you to every amazing speaker. Thank you. Thank you for answering our questions, and we look forward to sharing our successes with you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is 6.29, and we have had a fantastic evening with you. This session has been recorded and will be released on YouTube. When it's released, we will announce to the public. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic night. Good night, everybody.